Sasha4Networknews.com. It's still the very first day for us during CES 2011. And we're still at the Freescale suite and uh, with Robert. Robert already introduced us some tablets from Freescale, based on a Freescale platform. And Robert, you have some, some pretty new devices over here. Could you please walk us through? Yeah, sure. So, you know, we talked about um, before some devices that come out of Shenzhen, you know, low price, but also some other p uh, tablets that are, you know, looking at Europe and very uh, specific usage models. Here what we have, let's start with the Ozing tablet. So this is a very interesting okay. tablet. Uh, as you can see from the user interface, it's specifically designed at the Chinese market. It's resistive touch, um, and they've done that for a number of reasons. Firstly, they believe in, t in terms of entering uh, Chinese characters and details, you still need a stylus as opposed to the finger. Um, but they've really, you can see from the user interface, this is not designed for a consumer. That's not their target market. This is aimed at the Chinese government and the gifting market. So it's more of a productivity tool. So they've loaded Office, obviously, or Office to go. Um, but also, you know, they realize that ple people play games at work as well. So they have, <laughs> have games on there. So it's, it's more of a productivity and uh, personal device all rolled into one. Now this is not a low-end product. This is uh, retailing for approximately six hundred dollars. Wow! So it's not. This is the the opposite of what we talked oh, about. Oh, that's before. a great rugged build quality. Yeah, it, it, as you can see, uh, you know, it's very nicely put together. Yeah. Uh, good usage model. It's designed as an e-reader as well, as you can see from the the shafting of the of the of the, uh, the hardware here. And uh, really, what we've seen here is. This has been successful and they've learned very quickly and they've actually come out with a second generation, <coughs> which is the same form factor, okay. sticking with a resistive, resistive touch interface. Um, and unfortunately, we just got this yesterday. It won't start shipping for a couple of months. Okay. Um, but it's a higher resolution screen, uh, a little bit more responsive. Uh -huh. They've uh, you know improved the UI, added some more uh, bookmarks to get to, to surf the web a little quicker. But we're seeing a, the market evolving uh, and adapting extremely quickly. What about this LivePet AR? Yeah, so this again, if it's from China Telecom, so as you know, they, this is a company that knows what they're doing in terms of the wireless space. Again, as you can see, this is a nicely packaged product. It's a 7 inch uh, tablet running Android 2.1. Um, they're looking at really selling this, obviously, with this to, to get revenue through the subscription base. Yeah. But they've done a nice job in terms of preloading a lot of apps. As you know, they have their own app store. So in terms of Android fragmentation, they're, they're, they're not going to expose their end users to that. You can buy a 7-inch tablet. Um, the price points is still being determined, you know, depending on where you are uh, and what kind of subscription rate you're going to sign up for. But it's again, it's a 7-inch tablet running Android 2.1, which is in the market today, which will give you a pretty good user experience. You've got a lot of preloaded apps. You can get up and running and, and, and get into the tablet world extremely quickly and easily. Um, so again, as you can see, this is more of a consumer device. As we said mm -hmm. with Ozing, they're looking more at the enterprise market. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of customers looking at getting into the different segments of the market. So here's a company called Astri, which as you can see from the app we've got running and the UI is looking very closely at the educational market. Right. And a very young, you know, three, starting off three to five year olds. And they believe that there is a market, um, you know, they're still determining the price is gonna be priced at. They're based out of Hong Kong. But again, if you look at this, is a very robust, it's designed yes. to be dropped mm -hmm. um, and, and really placed on the floor and moved and played with with a young child, and they believe this is a market that is going to take off very quickly. Again, it's it's an Android, mm -hmm. Android 2.1, but they're coming to market with a number of educationally based applications, which will make it very applicable for that marketplace. So again, we're seeing the fragmentation of, of the tablet market. Uh, this is not something that's coming. This is all something that's here today. Right. Okay. And we have another one down yeah. there, which is kind of interesting because this is more for. A home environment. Yes. So this is um, this is actually uh, a, a concept mm -hmm. from a company called Lidon. But as you can see, this is not aimed at you know simply browsing, uh, reading email, and uh, consuming video or music. They've really set this up as your home, uh, as your home energy gateway mm -hmm. or your your home monitoring system. So. Um, you know, they have a UI here, so if somebody's at the door, you can see who it is. Um, in terms of energy savings, you can see, you know, what devices are, are sucking energy within your home at that time and how much over the last last hour today, over the last month. Um, but also then, there's, they're real, you know, in, in terms of healthcare as well. 
Um, th these are all you know applications that an ecosystem they're looking at evolving and bringing to market very quickly. So again, the tablet is not simply a, a you know for consumers to consume data as they can. Uh, you know, from the PC that they might be today, but the evolution of how the tablet form factor might be used. Great, fantastic, Robert. So, a couple of new free scale tablets over here from China, such as for netbooknews.com. Thanks for watching.